Okay, so what we do know is that the Niners are promoting from within, and it's a trend. Brian Fleury is the latest one. He came to the Niners as a defensive coach, worked both sides of the ball, uh, quality control, and now he's a position coach despite never, ever playing tight end or, or coaching that position. But this is how the Niners do business, and their coaching staff is pretty good. What do you think of this trend? The question for me becomes, is this a positive thing or a negative thing? And I think you can spin it from both angles, that it is a positive thing. You've got a, an intelligent head coach who clearly has a lot to pass along to his disciples that can raise them up from within the ranks and has a track record of doing it successfully, promoting from within. But I also equate this to an analogy of, of purebred animals. Right. When, when, when you're attempting to, to breed a particular cat or, or dog or whatever it is, and, and you're going to sell that animal, you, you breed in these phenomenal traits, right? You've got a, a golden retriever that, that's got this luscious coat and all of that, but then it's got hip problems because it's a purebred and there's a little bit of, of inbreeding going on there as well. And so the negative becomes just that any, any negative traits that exist within the 49ers organization get passed along to that new coach as well. And eventually, if you have too much groupthink, if you mm -hmm. have too many people aligned in that way, it amplifies the negativity. So for me, it, it again goes back to what's the bigger, positive or negative. I tend to think that it's the positive traits Kyle Shanahan passes along to these coaches. But I also wonder if if not being clutch in key moments is something that's bred in much like hip dysplasia. Oh, so what basically you're saying is Kyle looks at it as like he sees himself as the best offensive coach in the world. This is the best offensive think tank, maybe coaching think tank outside of New England. Right. Why not indoctrinate your coaches? Why not have them learn here as opposed to bringing a bunch of guys who are setting their ways from other organizations company isn't that sort of how is that how it works I, I mean i'm not a tech guy my brother is shout out my brother who's let me use his house today is that how they do things in silicon valley like they try to indoctrinate everyone that comes in or do they want people from all over it's a mix and it depends on on your strategy you you certainly see companies uh, i've been a part of companies that have brought a lot of people up from within but there, there's also that belief that you, you need to avoid that group thing. You need to bring in outside voices. To me, that was the relief of bringing in Anthony Lynn, was that I've been saying for a while now that, that this seems to be a concerning trend for the San Francisco 49ers and Kyle Shanahan in his careers, getting tight in exactly the wrong moments, and to continue simply pr promoting from within and ignore bringing in any outside voices just perpetuates that it's it's doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results my, my, my thing with brian flurry in particular is i'm sure he's gifted and smart and hardworking because kyle shanahan has said he is and kyle no shanahan doubt. has the best judgment of other coaches but just to put him like to he needs to, a promotion right so you give him the tight ends coach wasn't there another promotion you could give him because he's never played the position never coached the position isn't it fair for any tight end on the team to be like what does Brian Flurry know that can help me do my job better? How is he going to make me better? I mean, I'm sure he's a rising star, but how is he going to make? How is he going to help me rise too? I, just, I think it's a fair question. It definitely is, and and you could see a, a quality tight end, a George Kittle, saying something like that to himself. Maybe not voicing that to Kyle right. Shanahan. Maybe not voicing it to the team, but a voice inside his own head. You just let let go of of my favorite coach, the coach that. It got me to where I'm at, and now you replace it with this gentleman. But I tend to believe that those traits you just mentioned that Kyle Shanahan put forth as, as the reason that Brian Fleury is going to be able to handle this role, being a grinder does typically endear you to folks, right? If you're a hard worker, if you're somebody that's nose is to the grindstone, and players on the team can certainly see that because Brian Fleury's been around, you could see them respecting the grind, even if he doesn't have a background there. And it's interesting to me that Shanahan does this consistently, that, that his belief is you should start on the defensive side of the ball mm -hmm. so that you truly understand core defensive principles. And then you reverse engineer it when you become an offensive coach. You then look at it from not, not how am I going to, to move the ball? No, how am I going to attack weaknesses in the defense? Yeah, that's really cool. And I, I like... It seems like Kyle Shanahan has a very 
clear cut concept of how to groom coaches. And I think him and his dad have been doing it for a long time. I mean, they're so proud of what they put together in Washington and they're, they have so much, uh, I mean, they like to point out how Washington basically dumped them for no good reason. Then they had a superstar staff over there. My only thing is like, there are a few coaches on this coaching staff who are clearly here because Kyle values their ability to game plan or help him on some conceptual level. Right. But they have no expertise with the position they're coaching, like this guy or Rich Scangarello. Like, right. you never played quarterback. You were not a quarterback coach. You were an offensive coordinator at, at some uh, small university. So I think Kyle must talk, to, you know, talk football with Scangarello or, or Flurry and be like, man, this guy is brilliant. Just like Sala, he can he can identify it, but still like that. A position coach is all about the techniques of playing a position, like the little tiny minutiae things that help you block better, get open. I mean, I don't think this guy has a back. I mean, I know he doesn't have a background in that. So anyway, it'd be interesting to see what Kyle, Kyle, Kyle knows. I'm not really. I, he I, does. Kyle knows. It's interesting. But it is very interesting. And these are, I believe, the, the position coaches that deserve the greatest amount of scrutiny. I agree that Rich Gangrello is in that camp. Like, like what evidence do we have of the positive impact of Rich Gangrello at such a critical position where he's going to be monitoring the progress of Trey Lance as he takes over the freaking franchise? So to, to me, Scangarello is like a offensive coordinator candidate. He had the job for a year with Vic Fangio. So I think the Niners, Kyle likes grooming guys who can become coordinators, head coaches. Those are, that's his tree. And I think he's, look, Anthony Lynn could be in his tree. Right. Uh, Mike McDaniel's in his tree. I think he's looking at Flurry as this guy could be in my, he's that good. He was a quarterback. He's done both sides of the ball. And But it's just like in his rapid ascension, he has to go through tight ends. And it just seems like kind of just, I'm just going to be here for a year until I get a better job. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, that's what it kind of what it feels like. But I'm, I'm, I'm sure just he's here really, so I don't get fine. He's really good. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, it, it is. Kyle Shanahan is preparing for this fact that it's a constant promotion cycle within right. his franchise. I, I mean, right. it's a blessing and a curse that that he is yeah. genius enough that people want to continue to cherry pick his coaches and, and bring them in. And that then requires that he's got to be consistently bringing up candidates to replace other coaches. I mean, Brian Fleury could be a head coach in two years. If if Mike McDaniel can become a head coach after one year of being a coordinator yeah. when he didn't even call plays. And then there's no telling what Brian Flurry could be in three years. So I, I, I see what Kyle's doing here. I just the future uh, is bright. They should. What I would say if I was Kittle, I would go up to Kyle and be like, "Look, look, fine, man. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Can we have like an assistant tight end coach who knows what he's talking about? Please, <laughs> please. How about I that? Get what you're doing here, Kyle. I mean, I'm just saying. I'm trying to get better. 